Scandal Profiler Tones and Talks, Season 3, Episode. Now it's Episode Thank 23, you. indeed. Uh, let me throw that rick at you. This season we're in still. And uh, yeah, Thomas, hello, Thomas. Great to have Hi, you Tom. with us again. Thomas promised in the last episode that he will have something interesting with, uh, you know, filtering, maybe a little bit of morphing, but uh, something that is definitely uh, relevant to the current goings on in the pop world. So, Thomas, let us know, what is it? Um, I come to that later. I have two oh, okay. hmm? songs uh, prepared. I've just watched uh, to to the top 100 in great britain and uh, us and uh, i found two um guitar parts simple guitar parts which are unique in their sound and uh but not really yeah if you listen to them the first time you think okay it's a normal sound it's a normal clean sound but there is a little bit of fine tuning, which makes these sounds cut out and unique. And uh, yeah, that's what, uh, what I've I tried to rebuild these tones. And um, yeah, to, to get the little twist and show you these little twists, why they sound great. Cool. So, um, Starting with the first one, uh, I want to show you the artist. Many of the US guys know the artist. It's that one. It's Morgan Wallen. Uh, the song is Thinking About Me and uh, it's from the album One Thing at a Time. Mm -hmm. And it's in the US um, Spotify Top 100. I don't know the position. Um, okay. The sound or the part I'm uh, talking about is this one. <laughs> What do you think? Not, not quite. Um, I was uh, triggered towards a different song I know because of what you were playing tonally. And um, then I realized, and this might be a little bit emphasized by uh, this transmission from you over to here with a Zoom, that some of the modulation stuff is a little bit over it's that exaggerated uh, because it's not just the pure guitar tone. There's something going on which does some movement, additional movement to uh, on top of the, the the notes you're playing. If I might express it that way, mm -hmm. hmm? it's uh, it's right. It's a simple setup, um, but for me the main part of the tone of the sound is uh, this room sound, this reverb sound. So uh, I don't mm. really know uh, how they record that, recorded that. Um, maybe they put an amp into a big room and uh, placed two microphones far beyond the amp. And, uh, or they did use some <laughs> reverb plugins. I did that uh, with the reverb, with the natural reverb and yeah, I'd like to show you mm. the rig manager. So here we are. You were right, it's a vibrato effect on that, but very subtle, mm -hmm. clean guitar tone, compressor, which uh, grabs quite well, squash is at plus 2.0, mm -hmm. mix at 100%, so just to give you that uh, play feel when, when you play soft, the tone is stable mm -hmm. and uh, you don't need to hit the strings very hard mm -hmm. to get that tone. Mm -hmm. um, amp settings, 
gain is at one and uh, yeah base middle treble presence a little bit down uh, a plexi bright amp model bright cap at 10 and uh, it's the value amp which i profiled with liquid profiling mm -hmm. vibrato <clears throat> just to uh, show you um without the vibrato is it's sounding like this you hear it but when you play single notes you get this one but when you play the melody you've it it doesn't really hurt the melody You just don't need to uh, make a finger vibrato that much. And it gets that nice, yeah, modulated twist. So uh, without the vibrato, now the line. With the vibrato. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, for me, a bit uh, wider, a bit, yeah, let's say a bit softer, but uh, smoother, smoother is, is the, the better word, I think. And then the key of everything is this reverb, which uh, has a high mix level at 83%. Mm -hmm. And the decay time is really low, so 0.5 and a room size, middle room size 4.8. No pre-delay and the early diffusion is at maximum. So without the reverb, it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. And with the reverb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this creates this typical amp in the room sound. And this is really dominant on that recording. So uh, if we try another reverb, just for comparison, natural reverb, let's say a large plate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> too much, definitely too much. If I turn the mix down, that doesn't have this typical sound or that uh, yeah great sound for that line more dry but big so yeah, yeah and the funny thing is i think uh, when i look at the parameters because you know um, coming also from you know studio production Mm. DAWs and uh, setting reverb parameters. Usually, when you get smaller, um, you get this weird phasing, shuddering, yeah. weird stuff. And I don't hear that, um, at least not through our Zoom connection here. And um, um, it sounds really like naturally. Oh, there it is again. Um, it sounds really natural, like uh, like a room. Yeah. And and uh, that's pretty amazing because you rarely find that in reverbs and um, uh, I mean if this is not too too much hybris, um, kudos to Mr. Kemper for um, you know these algorithms which allow for stuff like that. So it's pretty impressive. And um, one thing, if you like to use that one in the profiler player. You can do that too. So uh, this uh, rig also will be on the rig exchange at Thinking About Me. In that way, with vibrato, um, without the natural reverb here, um, we might place the vibrato here. Um, I, I will do that afterwards. Mm -hmm. But um, if you would like to change that to um, the easy reverb, mm -hmm. then just take, uh, hope you, maybe you don't see that here. Um, no. no. Yeah. I will, I will tell you. So go uh -huh. to uh, easy reverb, 
and then go to load type. Mm -hmm. So you get those settings just with the e easy reverb and it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. So it's nearly the same with uh, just less parameters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the first sound, mm -hmm. first unique guitar intro or guitar part in pop music um, with just a little bit of subtle reverb. Mm -hmm. The next one um, is more pop music. Uh, this was a little bit more country style. Um, we have this one here. Wait a minute. I will show you. Here we are. Just the cover. And it's that one. Ah, du Dua by Dua Lipa. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the British top 50. And uh, yeah, it sounds like this. Another simple guitar line, and another simple clean sound, but when you try to recreate that, it's not so simple. <laughs> and this is uh, the one with the filter effect, mm -hmm. because in the intro, they have these uh, four bars. Um, I think the whole band is filtered, maybe, yeah, the one up filter uh, on the whole uh, production, on the whole mix bus and uh, then opens up when uh, yeah when when the second intro starts <clears throat> so i didn't do that in the playback but we can uh, yeah imitate that stuff and um yeah i will show you what i used for that one so here's the sound it's just all like always the compressor at the beginning the VAR low pass, we will talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Graphic EQ, micro pitch and dual delay. No reverb, so it's really bone dry, this uh, sound. The, the yeah, light roomy sound comes from the dual delay. And um, yeah, first of all, amp sound is again, gain very low. 1.9 mm -hmm. i will turn everything off except the comp yeah except the compressor so we have this is the the basic sound mm -hmm. yeah the settings for the compressor yeah they are quite intense so uh 5.0 intensity attack at 3.8 squash at plus 0 0.8 and the mix level is at 95 percent mm -hmm. um we talked about that um the last episode graphic eq um <clears throat> this gets a little bit rid of <clears throat> the uh, lower frequencies mm -hmm. so it's uh 1k 500 250 and 125 cut down also 8k so uh yeah <clears throat> some some kind of uh letting the singer a little bit of uh space mm -hmm. so without it sounds like that with so it's just a bit mm. thinner the, the low frequencies don't have that much effect <clears throat> sorry on the, the uh, on this guitar part because it's a higher guitar part played mm -hmm. on the B string mm -hmm. but uh, when you listen to the lower strings and with without the EQ mm -hmm. 
So it uh, just gives you this uh, little more thinner sound uh, and this sound cuts better through the mix. So um, yeah, this graphic EQ is very good for these tones and these guitar parts for especially for those uh yeah 80 style single coil guitar uh, single note guitar parts mm -hmm. next thing is the micro pitch now it's getting uh stereo mm -hmm. just again without and with So this is very interesting. So now you get this this guitar part open up <clears throat> instead of just uh, cutting in, in the middle position. And um, very uh, important for uh, comping for a singer, for recordings and if you play stereo on stage, you get the guitar out of the center mm -hmm. and uh, leave space for the artist very uh, important and um, yeah it's um, quite detuned this tone without mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mix level 85 percent and crossover at 123 so uh, but but i don't uh, play that uh, these lower notes in in that song so um yeah it's, it doesn't matter this crossover mm -hmm, mm -hmm. parameter then the next thing is dual delay which is set for uh, yeah slapback delay oh now i which fits to um the dual epa dual epa yes delay. <laughs> epa delay <laughs> <clears throat> You hear it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just one uh, one slap, Puff. one slap, but this slap is very soft. Mm -hmm. It's not that rockabilly slap, and it's soft because it has mm -hmm. a high cut mm -hmm. at three k, and it has modulation. Mm -hmm. So if you turn down the modulation and turn up the high cut. And turn well, there's something else. Ah, the chorus. So it adds also a little bit of modulation, this delay, and gives so, uh, yeah, let's say a, a slightly small room mm -hmm. own, room mm -hmm. sound, but, mm -hmm. but not uh, that typical room or amp in the room sound as we had uh, with the other song. <coughs> so this is um, the basic stuff. So uh, if I needed to play that song, I would use this sound in the whole song, but in the intro, there is this typical filter stuff. And now we come to uh, what, what I was going for. Mm -hmm. um, I took the bar low pass effect. So normally when, when I use those filter stuff, I, I use a bar effect because they are sounding a little bit, yeah, uh, more muffled, more not that clean. They, they are sounding different. So this is this typical for me, the typical filter sound. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> here we are. Wow, low pass. <laughs> Dual low pass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> das sind wir schon wieder. Dual low pass. It's There we go. Low again. Pass. There we go. <laughs> okay, but it's only one low pass. So um, pedal mode is on, but I don't use the pedal. Mm -hmm. Annual at 6.1, peaks 5.8, and this is how it sounds. And off. So more def defined, more present. 
it's just to to have this yeah uh, high cut tone with a low pass filter mm -hmm. so okay we have a four bar intro where we might need this um low pass filter and um we can do that like you did <clears throat> with the pedal and fade it in but i'm lazy um and uh, i talked these days with burkhardt and he told me that he is uh, using morphing with a uh, yeah long time sequence that the drummer plays they play with a click mm -hmm. and they have yeah a middle eight or something a song part of eight bars and he's using morphing all the eight bars and instead of working with the pedal and uh, turning the pedal eight bars uh, slowly down mm -hmm. it just sets this to the time song time eight bars all and right um you know the the rise uh, the rise the and, fall rise and fall time okay yeah. you can set it to such uh Big, yes. big numbers. Yes. Ah, that's smart. Yeah. So, yeah, so, you're, lazy. Um, you're lazy, but smart lazy. <laughs> lazy, very lazy. So, let's see. Um, <clears throat> I would raise the mix up mm -hmm. for the intro sound, mm -hmm. then go to the morph sound. And this would be the sound without the low pass filter. So, that means mix all the way down mm -hmm. this is now low pass filter bypass mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> then we need to go to rick and we have a song tempo of 75 which is not right it should be i think 129 shift key is very important for those smart settings mm -hmm. Ah, here we are. And the rise time. So fall time <clears throat> is at zero. That means when I press the, the button, the number button again, it goes directly to the uh, red setting. And we can rise time up to 16 bars. Oh, yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah. So... Uh, until up to four bars, it's uh, very mm -hmm. fine-tuned. Mm -hmm. And we have 3.5. Uh, here we are, four bars. Mm -hmm. So trying that <clears throat> again. Um, after the input count, the click, I will press the button. So mm -hmm. now I need to press that once again so uh, this is the bass sound and the bass six sound but you set and it to four now and before you said you have it oh no Burkhardt has it set to eight he said Burkhardt has it okay. set I think, uh, I think you need four sometimes need four. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I need, yeah I need just four <laughs> okay got it okay here we go Okay, that's so pretty, mm -hmm. that's pretty convenient. Smart. So for for the lazy bastard in me, <laughs> it's. Uh, but as you might hear, there is uh, for me, uh, it's a bit coming a bit too early to the high frequency sound. So um, for yeah, me, you should be able to edit the curve. Over yeah, four bars. We would be. Yeah. Off. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's yelling now, <laughs> <laughs> going crazy about the two guys <laughs> and their ideas. We we need more curves. Um, but what you can do is, uh, yeah, set it to five bars, set it to six bars, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it works uh, totally fine. Mm -hmm. But it's just another approach to uh, get this morphing going on, especially the, the, the drummer doesn't need to play with a click. So uh, you will have this tempo and uh, some, some 
something between 125 and 135, there will be those four bars and you, you, you can uh, make this morphing with a pedal or automated morphing by yourself than here, mm -hmm. instead of doing the pedal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's just uh, if you if you like to have some some freedom on stage to to play and jam around and don't want to stand with the pedal there. So there is this option to uh, program these morphing parameters for a typical uh, time length mm -hmm, mm -hmm. until 16 bars. And if you if you like uh, to have more 32 bars, then take the half tempo and uh, make 16 bars so uh, it's just mathematic cool easy going. yeah <clears throat> pretty good uh and yeah you can save this per rig yes definitely it doesn't, it doesn't have to be you know the uh the 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 general rise and fall time for no. the morphing parameter it can be just stored with that special rig that's uh yeah i just uh realize about these uh, these and you can uh i did uh the the fall time at zero so but you can also uh, use it until 16 bars so mm, yeah mm -hmm. if you like to go back oh. in that time lag <laughs> right and even uh go to eight bars <laughs> coming down <laughs> If you have one at each bar, yeah. when I've done the eight bars, you're down zero and then you can uh, have 16, <laughs> yeah, 16 <laughs> to come 16. up again. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then go to the next trick and have uh, another right, six. Right, right. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. There's a lot of uh, uh, cool, cool information uh, and, you know, production tricks in there. And uh, uh, as well, I mean, it was a couple of episodes ago that where we had a state of the guitar and post NAM and things like this. So mm. um, here with you, uh, we have a pretty good example for a state of the guitar player, I guess, uh, because so many things have changed in some at least professional areas um, i've been seeing some artists and visiting some shows uh, a couple of uh, yeah, in the last couple of weeks and uh, i realized that more and more um and as we were saying this um, about this one guitar player hannes kelch mm -hmm. um, who's uh, even programming you know eq drops to make room at certain places in the song for the singer uh, uh, room in his guitar tones to uh, uh, you know, serve the performance and the overall uh, sound stuff, and that's never been a concern of guitar players, you know, um, or a lot of, <laughs> or 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 a lot of musicians. And these yeah. these, these are more you know, uh, the mixing and production things which now come to the guitar players because mm. a because they can do, yes. And B, uh, I think because uh, a lot of shows require that um, these days. I've seen, I don't know, you m might not fam be familiar with him. Contra K is is a pretty big rap artist mm -hmm. in Germany. He was he, he's playing arenas, and um, it was rap, but they had drums and um, a lot of bass and synth and um, a lot of guitar in there as well. But uh, they 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 told me that they have uh, programmed a lot of stuff as well, where mm. um, guitars getting in and out and making room for uh, some other things to happen. And uh, that's usual. That's stuff that usually hasn't been possible. And mm -hmm. um, then in between, the sound engineer would have had uh, the uh, the duty to to control that in a way. But uh, now it's so much more interesting. Um, and that's uh, a new thing for guitar players to shine as well, I think, um, yes. in, in terms of business. When you know you, if you get your shit together, and of course the tone and the expressiveness that comes with the pure playing, that you'll be able to just plug into an amp and be 
able to uh, to get your tone going. But all the other things uh, that are now um, you know possible and also in parts uh, some requirements uh, they make all the difference uh, for definitely definitely having a career. Then um, I realized, and it's becoming more and more like every year, I guess. Yeah. So pretty it interesting. Starts, it starts when when you're uh, working with um, backing tracks on stage. So then you need to uh, focus on uh, different frequencies. You need to uh, yeah get into those spots where where you need to be uh, when you play in a trio of. ACDC cover band. You you won't. <laughs> yeah. You won't need to uh, cut the mid frequencies when the uh, singer starts. But uh, in those modern pop, uh, yeah, productions, there is definitely a need for that. And if you play with with in ear, there's uh, other stuff to think about. So, yeah, for the modern guitar player, there there is a need to use that all that stuff. Yeah, and even um, I think the higher you go the ranks, um, the the higher, the bigger, and the more successful and well funded the productions are. I, I think it's even uh, I wouldn't say less important, but once you have you know a, a staff of uh, FOH engineers who are mixing the show. Um, uh, they can take care of it, but uh, when you get down, but you want to have, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, budgets and uh, uh, production size, um, when you want to have that quality of sound and the, the performance, uh, but you don't have uh, the budget to have your own engineer with you for each show, um, now you are in the position to uh, take care of stuff like that uh, uh, on your own uh, uh, much more because uh, uh, because you can and uh, you don't have to explain to a sound engineer well when he or she is singing uh, uh, please don't make the guitar lower just take out a little bit of I don't know 1k or so uh, which will never work anyways so you do that and it's all fine and uh, and they are very thankful that you do that yeah, so right. in the, in the earlier days uh, you needed to turn your volume up when you're playing solo. Now, these days, you need to cut the mid frank, the high frank frequencies when the singer starts. <laughs> so this is the, 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 mm -hmm. the things changed. Yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, uh, pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and also with the, you know, your mono uh, in the intro and then uh, when the vocals and the band comes in, you open up the mid for something else, just by your programming of your tone. Um, that's thinking, that's production thinking and not yeah. just pure guitar thinking. Teamwork. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, support hey. the artist. Yes, of course. And uh, yeah, support each other. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yo. Thanks a lot for this one. Um, opens up again um, some new uh, parts in the brain for um, where you no know, things to um, to think about and uh, try this at home, people. This the rigs will be up on the yeah. exchange, and uh, if you have some questions, requests, uh, just uh, let us know uh, because we found out that uh, we can create rigs on request <laughs> so we try, to, if, we try to so if you have also requests and not only uh, some artists who are playing saturday in yeah, saturday night live or big stages uh, just let us know um we might be able to help and uh, it would be interesting because it also would open no wider our horizon about what's going on there in your community as well okay that should be enough uh, of talking. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you very much for being here and uh, sharing this uh, with us. And um, I say bye. Bye. bye.